ओके सो दस फार आई वॉज मेयरली रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू प्रनाउंस ओपनिंग स्टेटमेंट दैट फ्लाइज अगेंस्ट द फेस ऑफ अकेडमिक कंसेंसिस नाउ ही देन प्रोसीड्स टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू जस्टिन वेरी मॉडेस्ट क्लेम दैट देर आर प्रोमिनेंट साइंटिस्ट हु आर क्रिस्टियंस दिस इज रैदर एन अनकॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल क्लेम बट लेट्स लिसन वॉट प्रणव हैज टू से ऑन दैट realize that a scientist can't believe in god right oh sure well apart from francis bacon the founder of the scientific method he was a devout christian well yeah and johannes kepler who discovered the laws of planetary motion really and so were boyle newton and pascal actually well maybe there were a few actually that was just the 17th century then you've got leibniz lavoisier linnaeus in the 18th faraday maxwell pasteur in the 19th all right but they were all in the past nowadays okay i'm going to get to what he's saying in a bit uh, but one important thing that happened in the 1850s is uh, charles darwin's on the origin of species the book got released got published and until that point we didn't really have an answer to the question of hey where did all this diversity and all these things we see could it have come some other way than some complex intelligent design and creation could it have come up through any other means and the answer to that question was given in that book on the origin of species well the answer to that book was not given in the origin of species and that's such a naive telling of uh, darwin's uh, uh, publication in fact i have mildly addressed this even in one of our previous videos uh you can actually check that out but uh, i'll just go on listening for now charles darwin explained that a simple biological process that takes place over millions of years can lead to extreme complexity and diversity in all these things so before this book was published before we had an answer to the question of creation it made sense for people to believe in a creator atheism was never mainstream until this book and after this point after the publishing of that book or after it came into the mainstream so maybe a few more decades after that you can safely say by the end of the 1800s the amount of scientists that are christian became very few and far between okay so post darwin all scientists are atheists wow in fact some time back he made this video titled why are most scientists atheists um after receiving some pushback in the comments in a later video he kind of updated that argument to say this in my video about why most scientists are atheists i should have made this point in fact the title of that video should have been why most scientists after the publication of the origin of species are atheists because i get comments like these about how newton and all these great scientists are devout theists they were before darwin's time that's probably why if newton were alive today he probably been atheist i found that thumbnail quite funny uh, under the atheist title you have lawrence krauss richard dawkins carl sagan sean carroll and so on and now please show me the theist side <laughs> very charitable and honest isn't it uh, zakir naik i don't even quite recognize the other faces there but basically what he means to say or what he is trying to imply is that there are no prominent scientists who are theist so in this particular reel justin is obviously uh, giving a, the names of a few towering figures in science from its founders in the 17th century through to the 19th century and pronounce retort is that well those were before darwin after darwin things changed and all scientists uh, gradually and eventually became um, you know atheists the 100 years of nobel prizes written by israeli geneticist baruch abba shalev gives us a detailed statistical analysis of the profiles of nobel laureates across fields from the 20th century that is to, to uh, 1901 to the year 2000 the post darwin era so as per shalev's estimates 65.4% of nobel prize winners are christians these are facts atheists constitute only 7% of nobel prize winners and if you were to consider only the pure sciences the difference is even more stark so pranav's bold statement is easily debunked unless of course Uh, you can say that these nobel winning scientists are not very prominent ha huh. justin goes on to even name some prominent scientists who are outspoken christians today let's listen to what pranav has to say on those particular names that justin puts up 
See, so the ones he's gonna name after the 19th century are gonna be, you know, very few handfuls of scientists that probably had a very Christian upbringing and they were all probably indoctrinated into believing the gospels that Christians believe in. Yeah, they probably went into science fields but kept holding on to their faith. But the few that he's gonna name who are scientists from the 20th century are all people you've never heard of, no one significant or very prominent people who are fundamentalist Christians. Right, but they were all in the past. Nowadays, scientists don't believe in God. Well, apart from people like astrophysicist George Ellis, AI pioneer Rosalind Picard, geneticist Francis Collins, who sequenced the entire human genome. What? They're all Christians? Yes, them and many more. So the names that Justin mentioned of current prominent scientists like Francis Collins, uh, Rosalind Picard, and George Ellis by pronounced theory are either fundamentalist Christians or they are not very prominent. Such audacity much wow. For sure the second option that these names are not very prominent can be easily cast out of the window. Francis Collins, the former NIH director who led the Human Genome Project is the man the world was looking onto during the times of COVID. Uh, Picard is one of the world's leading AI scientists credited to be the originator of uh, effective computing, a branch of computer science that marked the birth of AI-based facial emotion detection systems. Ellis, George Ellis is one of the world's leading theoretical cosmologists. To quote the Royal Society's summary of him, a theoretical physicist who is considered to be a world leader in, in relativity and cosmology. So in terms of their actual contributions to science, these names rank much higher than most of the faces that Pranav displayed in his clickbait thumbnail. Now the second option is that they are fundamentalist Christians. Quite funny. Collins and Picard were both atheists who came to Christ later in life uh, based on the evidence. Ellis on the other hand was raised an Anglican and walked away from Anglicanism to join the Quakers movement. But I think for these internet skeptics, only Dawkins and Krauss and Neil deGrasse Tyson, these are the real scientists. Oh, when in reality, uh, most of these folks, they've actually stopped doing serious science long ago and they're completely devoted to preach atheism. So was it any wonder, for, for instance, when E.O. Wilson, arguably the greatest evolutionary biologist of our times, called as the Darwin of the 21st century, who recently passed away, he dubbed Dawkins as a science journalist. Look, there are great and very prominent scientists who are atheists and there are Christians as well. And it actually proves nothing about the truth of either worldview. And it is quite unfortunate that new atheists like Pranav make these irrelevant arguments and take the side of science when science is not really on your side. It was born out of a Christian theistic tradition as I explained and points clearly to a creator for those who are interested and genuinely a seeking, do check out our recent interview with Dr. Stephen C. Meyer where we go over recent scientific discoveries that clearly point to a creator. And to such atheists like Pranav who in the name of science are promoting atheism, you would do better to uh, come forward with more constructive arguments rather than putting stuff in science's mouth that science is silent about. This is Asher John for The Carpenter's Desk.